Every Power BI developer would like to have faster DAX calculations, which you could get to by optimizing the DAX measures that you have, or you could consider using visual calculations, which are supposedly faster than traditional normal DAX measures. Well, if that is true, not that many people checked and also not how much faster. So that's what we're gonna do in this video. We're going to have a look at three common calculations for both import mode as well as direct query mode and see what is faster. Let's dive in. I think most Power BI developers that have used visual calculations agree that they are generally easier to understand and write than traditional DAX measures. And they are especially great for controlling visual specific elements like dynamic titles or the scaling of your axes or other conditional formatting options. But maybe they can also save you in a scenario where you have slow DAX measures and you don't know or don't have the time to optimize these DAX measures. Then visual calculations maybe are an easy alternative. Well, if that is true, we're going to check now. Now for that, we're going to have a look at three common calculation types. The first one is going to be a Pareto calculation. The second one, a moving average. And the third one is going to be a calculation to set the maximum and the minimum. Now, to clearly see the differences, we also need a big data model. So that's what we have over here. Now, the main table that we're going to use for the calculations is this one here, FCT sales, which is connected to the product dimension, the date dimension, store and customer. Now, that sales table has 211 million rows. So I think if there's any difference between visual calculation speed versus additional DAX measures, it should be visible. All right. Now, let's go to the report. We have two identical visuals. However, the one that you see on the left, there I'm using a traditional DAX measure to draw the line, the Pareto line, and there on the right hand side, I'm using a visual calculation. Now, just for context, the Pareto line just shows the cumulative percentage of quantities sold for the different subcategories here. Now, in a traditional DAX measure, you could calculate it like this. We need to divide the cumulative quantity by the grand total, and the grand total you calculate by removing any filter on the subcategory name using a calculate function. And then for the cumulative quantity, well, before you calculate that one, you first take the total quantity for a subcategory, which is forming here the filter context. And then you can use a filter function to filter the subcategories to only those subcategories that have a quantity that's equal to or bigger than the current sales, which is the, well, the quantity for the subcategory that falls in that filter context. And then you iterate over it and you sum it up. Now, and that is the cumulative quantity that you then divide by the grand total. Now, it's not that easy. You really need to have a good understanding of row context, filter context, and different functions. Now, compare that to the visual calculation. Here you see, I have actually two visual calculations. Step one, you see here on the tooltips, let me edit it. Now what we have over here is quite a bit shorter than what we had before. As a first step, we divide the total quantity by the overall grand total. Now to get that grand total, we collapse all of these subcategories, everything that we have on the rows, and this way we get the grand total, and then we just divide the quantity by that number, which are the numbers that you see over here. As a second step, we want to, well, sort the subcategories in descending order by the percentage of grand total and then calculate a running sum up to uh, that subcategory. Now, and that's what we see in that second visual calculation over here. You see, we have a running sum of the percentage of grand total and we order the subcategories by total quantity in descending order. And that's it. You see, much more understandable and easier to write than the traditional DAX measure. But is it also faster? Let's check. Now to test that, we're going to open up the performance analyzer and I'm also going to open up DAX Studio. Now DAX Studio makes it easy to clear the cache just to make sure that we have cold cache and therefore have a fair comparison. All right, then we go back to our Power BI report, go here to the first visual and refresh it. And then I do the same for the second visual. And you see that Pareto chart with the normal DAX calculation ran for 700 milliseconds and the second one with the visual calculation, about half of that. Now we should be looking at the DAX query. So let's open this up. Here you see 472 milliseconds and here you see only 100 milliseconds. 
quite a big difference. Now, of course, we can rerun this analysis a second and third time to uh, get more sure about uh, these results. It's always a good idea. And to do that, well, I'm just going to go back to Tech Studio again, clear the cache and repeat these steps. So over here, the first visual, then click again on analyze the second visual. You see a similar result. The normal DAX measure is quite a bit slower than the visual calculation one. And if I open this up, look at the DAX query. Here we have 423 milliseconds. Here we have 100 milliseconds. So almost four times as quick. Now, is this a noticeable difference for end users? Well, if this is your only visual, a difference of 300 milliseconds, probably nobody's going to notice. However, if you have multiple visuals and it is 100 milliseconds here, 100 milliseconds there, it adds up to maybe a few seconds. And then in those scenarios, well, the end user would clearly notice the difference. However, we're still in import mode. And here we already see a clear difference. But now let's also try this in direct query mode. So here I'm going to follow exactly the same steps. Let me just open the performance analyzer. Here we have the normal DAX chart. Let me just click on analyze this visual. And finally, we have a result. It took 33 seconds almost. Now let's see if the visual calculation is a bit quicker. Now I'm going to go over here, do exactly the same. And boom, it is already done under two seconds. A huge difference versus the traditional DAX measure. So here, if I click on the plus icon, you see it's really the DAX query that makes the difference. Wow. So you see that speed difference between visual calculations and traditional DAX measures is even bigger if we are in direct query mode. Now, then you might wonder, is it just because of this DAX pattern maybe? Well, therefore, we have two other examples. Let me just go to the moving average calculation. In the normal DAX measure, I just use the calculate function to calculate the total quantity over the last three years, a three year moving average. Now for the visual calculation, in this case, we just need one, we can use a moving average function. So take the moving average of the sum of quantity and over how many periods? Three. Okay. And that's it. Much easier. But what is the impact on speed? Well, just like before, I can open the performance analyzer, clear the results, and then we can analyze the first visual as well as the second one. And you see, this time is not as bad as before. However, still for the traditional measure, the normal DAX measure was four and a half seconds. For the visual calculation, also took some time, 2.9 seconds. Now, if I click here on the plus icon, then you can see the timings for the DAX query. Still, a huge difference between the visual calculation and the normal calculation. And if we would do exactly the same in import mode, of course, the timings are going to be quicker. And actually, the difference between the visual calculation and the normal DAX one is bigger. So you see the DAX query timing 49 milliseconds and here for the normal DAX calculation 238 milliseconds. So more than four times as fast. And what about highlighting the max and the min? Are we then better off with visual calculations? Well, it gives you more flexibility, as you can check out in this video over here. However, is it also faster? Well, let's follow the same steps again. Now I'm in the direct query report. I'm going to refresh the visuals one by one. And here there's a small difference, but uh, not huge. Let me just open this up. You see, indeed, at the normal DAX measure it took a little bit longer. However, not crazy much longer. And it could actually also be just coincident. Let's just let me try again. I'm going to clear the results, refresh the visuals. And again, visual calculations are a bit faster, but the difference is much smaller. So you can see there are clear differences between different DAX patterns, whether visual calculations would give you much advantage or not. Now, let me for completeness also show you the results for the import mode one. And also here you see a small difference between visual calculation speed versus traditional DAX measures. Although small, it's almost twice as quick, a difference of 50 milliseconds. So you see that visual calculations can give you better performance. And that's because they don't run over the entire underlying fact table. Instead of that, there are calculations that run over the result data set for that visualization only. And you can see that also in the queries. So if you want to dive deeper, you can just 
copy these queries over into DAX Studio. And then we can turn on the server timings and run that query. And then over here, you see the server timings for our traditional DAX measure. Now, before we have a closer look, we can just copy this and then we go back to our Power BI file and do the same for that visual calculation. Copy over that query, go back to DAX Studio and paste it here. And you see there's a much longer query actually than for the traditional measure. Now let's run it. I'm going to turn on the server timings and run the query. Now, of course, always before you run it, make sure to clear the cache. Okay, now also here we can validate the results that for the visual level calculation query, it was much shorter. So you see only 71 milliseconds. And for the first one, there we have 123 milliseconds. Now, how can it actually be that these visual calculations generally run quicker than the traditional DAX measures. Well, that is because these visual calculations, they run against a result data set, a small little table with the data points for that specific visualization against which the calculation then runs versus normal DAX measures that sometimes have to, scan, have to scan the full underlying table, big difference. And that's where the speed difference comes from. And if you want to dive a little bit deeper into the differences, you can copy over the queries now, let me just go and do it for the Pareto one. I copy the query into DAX Studio over here, turn the server timings on, then clear the cache and run the query. And then you can copy or duplicate that tab and do the same thing again. Now, let me get rid of that. Then I go back to Power BI. And then for the visual calculation, we also can copy over the query, put it in there, clear the cache and run it. And of course, don't forget the server timing. So let's do it once more. Now, the visual calculation took a total of 100 milliseconds, the DAX query, and over here for the traditional measure, it took 300 milliseconds. So similar results. You see that DAX query for the traditional measure is actually much shorter than for the visual calculation. However, we do have more queries that have to run in the background. And here for the visual calculation, you see how long that one is. However, there just, is one query that runs in the background. And what that visual calculation actually does here is it calculates the percentage of grand total and the Pareto numbers over here, yeah, against a much smaller data set. So if you scroll up, you see over here, it prepares the data set, that small input data set for the visual calculation. So am I advocating for always using visual calculations because they are quicker? No. Because in the end, visual calculations are, well, calculations for a specific visual. You cannot reuse them for other visuals. So there are also downsides of visual calculations. However, if you really run into a scenario where you do not know how to optimize a certain measure, or you don't have the time, or uh, you just look for an easy alternative, well, then in those cases, visual calculations could maybe help you out. And of course, you need to consider that there is still a preview option. Now, let me know your thoughts. Are you using visual calculations in your production reports already? Now, put it in the comment section below. If you want to learn everything about how I create Power BI reports, then check out my upcoming design transformation program over here, which is already starting this coming week. So check it out. If you just want to watch some more Power BI videos, then look at these two over here. I want to thank you for watching and see you in the next video.